Okay, hello everyone. Uh, so today's uh, tutorial, working with SQL, uh, which is closely related to the next tutorial later on, which is database schema design. So um, if if time will permit, we'll, we'll, I will combine the two uh, tutorials together, uh, but see how, how the time uh, works for us. So let me share my screen. Okay. So, uh, uh, so okay. Um, before starting, actually, let me get some kind of um, 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 like participation from you. So, can uh, can you define for me what SQL is? And let me add another type of question. Um, well, okay, let me wait for this first. Can any of you define what SQL is? Like, um, I suppose to have some kind of uh, background knowledge about this already. Any volunteers? Okay. So we have an answer from our also. Uh, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Uh, it's an a language to use to interact with relational databases. Okay. Uh, so here, like, uh, the next question would be, like, what is a relational database? Um, and what other types of databases are there? Um, besides the relational database. Anyone who can like uh, expand on this? Uh, okay, so another thing, okay, um, we we can, uh, okay, providing definitions is, is not necessarily, uh, okay, we can move on, basically, just um, maybe we'll start and then we can, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question about like how, how familiar are you with SQL? Um, so, yeah. Do you have an answer? So, like, can you, by a show of hands, like this, like, uh, use an emoji, thumbs up? Can you tell me, like, uh, how many of you, or if you have some experience using SQL before? Okay, so. Uh, good. So, like most of you, seems of course, uh, and it's uh, like it's because it's a requirement basically for this training. Uh, well, it's expected. So, for what this is for you is going to be, like let's say, um, it's a, a a brush up of for something that you already know. So, this we can move quickly over this. So, like, uh, you know what a database is, just it's uh, an organized collection of data in general. And there are, generally, there are two types of databases. There is a relational database, uh, which is called SQL as well, it can be called SQL database. Um, uh, be, uh, this is a, a database that is organized, that they, where data is organized into tables, rows, and columns. Um, and it's called relational because you relate different tables to each other, basically. Um, SQL 
is the, uh, the structured query language is a language you use to query and update such database. The other types of uh, database, of, actually there are several types, but they are collectively called non-relational or uh, NoSQL or not only SQL databases. These are databases that are not relational where the data is not organized in rows and columns. We're not going to go over this uh, today, but like uh, just um, uh, we're not going to go into it in detail. So I'm just going to mention that some types of them, they are like the key value. So the data is organized in key value pairs or document. There are also column family uh, databases and graph databases, graph databases where like uh, you have graph relationships instead of relationship between tables. Uh, okay. Yes, generally, uh, because relational databases are the most, like the most organized, the most structured, but, uh, and um, and the NoSQL have less structure, basically. It uh, translates also that uh, the, the high term structure of SQL databases, um, like it has its own, like it has advantages, but also has the disadvantage that it's like makes it less uh, flexible and less scalable. Uh, so there are uses, um, like uses like for relational databases and for non relational databases, which are more scalable, and more flexible, um, like for like for different structure of data. So yeah, as I said, we are more focusing today on SQL and relational databases. Uh, we are just mentioning non-relational or non-SQL just as a comparison. Uh, okay, just in generally, we know what uh, uh, DBMs, like uh, database management systems. Um, this is the software that interacts with the data, that with the database, the users and applications. So, uh, this is where you put your database, um, in, in a sense. So, like, probably you you have interacted with some of this since you know SQL, like uh, MySQL, Postgres, uh, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, or uh, Oracle. These are all relational uh, DBMs, or what are called RDBMs. Um, for NoSQL, of course. Like for each kind of NoSQL uh, relation, uh, non non relational database, like for key value, you will find like red. This is one type of uh, DBM, DBMS. Sorry, and um, and there are others, of course. These are just examples. Uh, MongoDB for co uh, for column um, for document. Sorry, for document databases. And your for J is for graph. Uh, Databases and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so as a as a, just like a, an expansion of what I was saying before, the difference between SQL and NoSQL. So sometimes what do we call so we SQL is SQL is a language, right? But sometimes we call when we say it's a SQL database, we mean a relational database. So just like it is to, it's used interchangeably uh, in that sense. Uh, but okay, here the comparison between the relational databases, SQL and uh, no um, NoSQL. Um, so I, um, as I said here, like um, it's highly structured and um, for for SQL and for NoSQL, it's um, uh, more scalable. I don't know if that's actually not mentioned. But ah, uh, yeah. So it requires further vertical scaling to handle like volumes of data, while for NoSQL, horizontal scaling is possible and means that can handle can handle large volumes of data more easily. Okay, just. Um, I think uh, nothing major so far. So, um, can I say this? Yes, is there, a, is there a question? Sorry. Communication. Second, uh, let me mute everything here. 
All right, uh, sorry, I will share my screen again. Um, I apologize. Yes. Uh, okay, so just uh, as um, again, so characteristic of uh, relational databases or SQL databases is that they are made of schemas and tables. So we'll talk about, so we'll talk about schemas later on more. But for now, just the schema is how you define the structure of the database and like including what what um, what will be the tables, what will be the fields, the data types and like your possible values, relationship between tables and so on. Um, and you have to define this uh, beforehand, basically, in a, in a database. Uh, the tables are the units. Of the database of the database so you can have like um let's say think about uh, a database for a store uh, basically or like um, a factory uh, or a company of some sort like you have uh, where you have customers um maybe products transactions and like employees you can have for each of these entities you can have their own table and um uh, for like a, for example, taking a customer table, each row will be an individual customer, and columns will be like different attributes of this entity. So different attributes for customers. So like one column will be the name, the other column will be like some ID, um, another column will be maybe an address, and so on and so forth. So this is like this is how you define a table, and then the schema defines like. How, what are the tables we have? What are their, their fields, the data types, and if there are a relationship between them? Uh, okay, this is just generically, we will expand on this later. Uh, and yeah, so just more, focusing more on the language part of SQL. The advantage of using SQL is that like it had a standard set of commands defining how you like interact with the um, with the data in the in the relational um, database managers, management system so uh, like uh, how you perform all the um, crowds that create uh, read update and delete um, um, operations on the data so basically um yeah it's just a, a standardized way of handling that uh, if you already have some experience using like um, mysql or postgres and stuff like that sometimes like some of these um DB, dbms uh, will be they will have like they will handle they will be using sql but they also will be uh, like will have some kind of um uh, like specialized they will have their own kind of defined comments uh, with SQL that you cannot use with others, which is like um, having a standardized uh, language, like means that you are not dependent on the software, of course. Um, so, like you, ha like sticking with a standard SQL, just like uh, help with that. Um, SQL as a language uh, uh, ensures like uh, the um, four properties: uh, atomicity. Uh, consistency, isolation, and durability, and uh, like uh, these are like several like these uh, properties like uh, ensure reliability of the database um, uh, throughout changes. So like this is the definition of them. Atomicity is like uh, like uh, each attempt of change into the database is treated as a single um indivisible unit of work it can be either committed completely to the database uh, the changes can be committed there um all of it or not at all consistently that um 
each transaction has to like before each before and after each transaction the database have to have a valid state isolation is that like each transaction is treated uh like as if it's happening in isolation from any other one so if the database have multiple transactions happening at the same time each one of them like is not aware of the others uh durability is that like once the transaction is committed it's persistent uh permanently so these are the four uh, properties that sql ensures um okay so just like a Generic thing. So this we all already went over this before. So so because you like you mentioned that you have experience with SQL already. Um, like I expect that you already know these uh, commands already. So like the select command. This is like to query particular data from a table or more than one table. Insert. Um, yeah, starting at the um, recursing tables, update, update, delete, uh, create the database, create the table, create, drop a table or to drop a database to delete them, alter table. So all, like I, I expect that these are just basic commands. I expect that you know these and how they are structured and how do you use them generally. So yeah, so like here, yeah, I know I switched without so this is just like um sorry, there's a question. Uh okay, so there's a question. Uh, yes, yes, you can use MySQL if you um if you want. Uh, it shouldn't really uh, it shouldn't matter so much which one you use. Um um yes for now let's say you can use my sql uh go, moving forward you'll also be just um i don't know if we'll get this but yeah moving forward you also a lot of times we'll be using things uh, like um running things in a docker container or uh with other like with other like software and stuff so maybe you will be running postgres or other kind of um particular uh, database inside the container so in that case once you install docker you're fine you can use whatever is like required available um yes Alazar? Uh, my question was uh, will we store the data to the postgre database after the ed or after the emit and after we stored it will we use the database to uh, will the ED in the machine, uh, the input parts, uh, get the data from the post degree, or will it be as it was uh, meaning directly fetching from the CSV Um Why are you doing either or? Why can't you store the data in a database? You can have you multiple tables, basically, and you can store the data like uh, the the cleaned one or after the ada basically you can store that one and then you can also store any data that you after like if you run some kind of modeling and you want to store the result of that you can also store that in a different table so you are not really um you don't need to you can do both so you can store um all the data you use um okay so yes so because i expect that you already you know this you know what how the structure of the uh when you run a query uh in um how it looks like for this is i'm using just a select uh select command from from the uh, table called customer here I can, um, you know, the basics. So you can use limit three. Let's just like trying it. So uh, I'm getting first name from from customer. Here, so this is the result. So this is a table that is available to me. Um, this is the output of my of, of running the SQL command. Um, if I suppose that you you know this. And you know that, like, uh, 
it's not necessary. I don't need to use like a capital or small letter, it doesn't matter. It's just uh, a convention just to, to make it look better. Anyway, um, so nothing here to expand on, really. Like also there is like the different data types you have in SQL, you know, the basic integer and like numerical data types the basic integer and and float but there are other uh, other like different with different uh, precision or different uh, sizes storage sizes um big or small integer you have also um data and time data the data types boolean and so on and so forth so these are the the basic stuff so if you um you have you need some kind of a refresher on this like there are many resources you can you can do that and you can also like um like this for example programs uh, uh this you can actually just run things and try them uh, online you don't need to to install anything to 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 try it anyway so I think we are within time, so we can move on to the schema um, schema design. So just before that, yes, as you said, like in the, um, the documentation or in the challenge document, you are, we mentioned Postgres, um, there's Postgres and there are like uh, how you install it in different systems, um, but like you are not, necessarily required to use um, Postgres in particular. Um, okay. Um, right, so any questions so far? Otherwise we can go to what is schema design. Any questions? After we design the schema, should we include the script in the file? Um, the data SQL file that you used, yes, you can include that in. in um, I'm not sure if I'm getting what you're saying. You include the script in the file. What do you mean? Are, okay. I'm not sure if I'm getting you correctly, but um, okay. If uh, like uh, if you can clarify, it's um, all right. Um, okay. Yes, Macbeth. Macbeth. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so my questions were uh, in the context in the context of, for example, the EDA. Uh, what exactly do we store? Like, uh, do we just store the uh, our insights, or uh, what exactly do we usually store? Uh, let's say you got. Um, this is just an example. If you have in the data that you used. Um, okay, so you start with the database. Uh, let's say you start with a database that has multiple tables, right? And um, in a table in the ADA, maybe you have handled missing data, uh, meaning that you have modified the data in a way like you either delete it or clean the data in one way or more, you can store the clean data 
basically. That's what I mean. After ADA, basically after handling missing or outliers, um, you can store the clean data in your in your database. You can also, if you have added more features, like computed something, um, or like uh, modified something in the data. If you think uh, you wanted to mer merge data and store that as a table instead of having like separate tables, you can also do that. It's, there is a choice here, you know, on what you store. Um, so uh, depends on like, uh, uh, because the thing is that what is the goal of uh, like if storing data in the data, uh, in the, the database that you can use it later mainly so maybe not like uh, it's not like necessarily um as i say um it might not be like absolutely necessarily for like and just to perform the different uh, uh, task in this challenge it's just like thinking generally if you want to do the analysis in the later steps uh, you're storing the data in the data in the database in a way that makes it easier for you to query later on. Um, okay, so does that make answer your question? Okay. Uh, sort of. I I uh, I still I'm not sure. For example, what we would do in this task, but uh, I think uh, I'll ask more uh, once we get to to. to task yes. Stuff. Let's yeah. Let's go through the database schema design and we can then get back to that. So as I said before that the schema, that uh, schema is a blueprint of the database. So you decide what is the structure, of how the data is stored in the database. Um, so like um, here generally like, uh, yes, there is actually, um, what we are thinking about here is the logical database schema. This is like, Describing the conceptual model, basically it was the conceptual structure of the database, not how the physical in the physical schema. This is how you actually store the data physically in in um, on disk and stuff. So um, they are logical here. It's deciding what are in a relational database. What are the what will be your tables? What will be your columns? What are the relationships? And what are things like the primary uh, key and sec uh, like uh, foreign key, a secondary key, um, any integrity constraint, and so on. This is what you decide in the logical database schema. So, um, in um, in a relational database, um, what you have to make sure of in, in your schema design is that uh, yes, of course, your data is formatted consistently. Uh, and um, no important information is omitted. And this is very important is that for relation database that each record entry has a distinct primary key. So for, for relation database, it, you cannot have completely repeated rows in a table. You're like you cannot have exactly identical rows in the same table. So at least you have to have at least one um, column that has like completely unique values for each row. Uh, that's what we call a primary key. Uh, yes, there's a question. Okay, we'll get back to that in a bit. Um, Okay, so this is in general. So this is just examples of like, um, uh, let's say, an, uh, a data from like some kind of uh, social media uh, or like um, a forum kind of a website. You have users table, a post table, and uh, you can see like uh, in the user table as user id is a primary key it has a unique value for each row in the post table we have post id is a primary key for this each, each value is unique uh you can have multiple tables that are unique for each row 
or a combination of two tables is unique for each row. So that is still like a, it's a combined or like a, um, uh, like a, what's it called? It's a multi-column. Uh, key um, is still like a still valid uh, structure for a, um, a relational database. Uh, okay, just uh, okay. So uh, what you see here is um, okay. Just before I go there, uh, we said like what's important about relational database is that you can have relations between your between your data between your tables. And you can see because, like, um, as I said, uh, with this example, I'm talking about um, users and posts table. So, the um, it's the users who make this post. So each post in in the post table is made by a particular user, and I can refer to that user by the user ID, right? So here, this post is is was posted by the user with the user ID one, which is this Alice. Uh, the second, the two next, the next two rows are posts that are posted by a user with the ID two, which is Bob. So this is the same, the same user, uh, and so on, right? This reference, because I'm referencing a column here. This is called a foreign key. So what I'm saying is that this, there are a relationship between this uh, table and this table. And it is uh, like uh, basically uh, um, manifested by this use of this, uh, like the primary key here is appears here as a foreign key. Um, so this is a constraint, of course, because like uh, a user ID that appears, the values of a user ID that appear here can only be the values that already having the user ID as a user table. For example, I cannot have a user ID in the post table that is equal to six or 10 because I don't have it in my table. Just considering that this is my whole table, I don't have more values. So I have user ID from one to five. This is the only values I can have here. If I was using like some kind of arbitrary random numbers, they can they have to be verified basically. So if I was using like some kind of a random number, a hash number maybe for each user, then the values that appear in the post table have to be verified to be the same, well, uh, like available in the user table. So um, to, to design this, so this is already like, uh, I'm showing you this is a, a database that was two tables that have this relationship designing it or the design of it shown as a, like an entity relationship diagram is like this so in this design so this is the name of the table users and these are the columns id username email created at and these are the data type for each column so each value in each column has to be this right so integer and uh these are text and then timestamp I have a post table, also with its uh, columns and the data types. And here I have this relationship between the um, ID in the user table and the user ID in this post table. And it's shown like a, a one to many relationship. That means a user can have multiple posts. So the user ID that appears uniquely in one row here in the user table Will have, can appear in multiple rows on on the post. Uh, you can have uh, in the relationship. You can have also one to one as well, or uh, many to one, or like um, so. Designing this a ERDs, and you can do this when you design your your database um, schema. And you, if you do this, include this in your report. So you can use uh, like. Uh, here, like this website this is one like we can easily de do of course you can draw this your own yourself sorry you can draw this yourself i can draw this um sorry
sorry, but okay, go go. Um, okay, what I was talking about is this. Um, Sorry. Um, um, as I was saying, that like when you design this uh, ERD or when you design the schema of your uh, of your um, database, you can. Of course, draw this yourself. You can use this one of these websites to to draw this for you. So um, here, basically, you can define your uh, your database and have your ERD or the like the other way around as well. So um, um, yeah, so. Uh, as you can see here, the definition of the schema um, as like a, in in as like in um, we can see. Uh, sorry, I think you can export as there is a, there are um, you can import actually. Uh, um uh, from from postgres you can download this as well this file uh a, a, a .sql file and define your schema there so any questions so far just that before i move on to like uh, more stuff about um different kinds of schemas and uh, normalization, stuff like that. Any questions? Yeah, so yeah, just um, let's say I have uh, so just here when you're using this, um, So you already have an example. So I want to just uh, redesign this users on post uh, database I have here. So I have two tables, one. So I'm looking at the left side panel, right? So I have an ID column, which is an integer. I use a name, role, and created that. So um, it's not. Um, so I just defined it as an email, actually. Okay, so this is one. I'm getting a, an error because I deleted a table, but I didn't remove the constraints from it. So um, you have to delete this. And you can see I already have this. So like um, I have users on post tables. I defined each column name and the, the data type here. And um, so to define that there is a relationship here between these two, I have to like uh, include this from post. Uh, user ID goes to the user's ID. So so one to many relationship from, um, from user ID to in users to the post, okay? Also, many to one because I define it that way. Um, of course, I can define it the other way around. I can write it as ref and 
users ID um, posts that I did. So A, same. So the same relationship, it had nothing happened. <laughs> okay. And uh, once you do this, you can actually, as I said, you can download this, like uh, you need to just uh, sign in and then you can download it as an SQL file. You can see it here. I have it. So it will be like the script actually, this is an SQL script to create the database. So it's a create table, as you see, uh, users, and then create table post with this. And uh, um, the constraint for, for the primary and foreign key is here. The user ID is referencing the users from user ID, the user ID from users. So here, this is a, the SQL script that can create um, the database for me. I already designed it. So uh, I hope this is um, super clear, or I think it is. Uh, does this answer the question from before? Someone was asking. Um, maybe that if you want to have to save the schema design and the script your project. Um, yes, basically, I think it is, if I think that's, that was your question, right? Um, and yes, so you can save it. This is the question was here. So do the script in the file. So if I'm not mis if I understand correctly, this is what you're talking about. The one that you create the database with. Um, okay. Um, um, I'm not sure. Like uh, okay. So just to continue before, like we're out of time. Uh, when there are, so you see like, um, how you choose your, uh, starting with your data, how you use what is your tables, what is your, going to be your different columns and stuff. This is our choices. And you have to take some like, um, um, there are things to take into consideration when you do this, when you make these different choices. Uh, for example, like uh, talking about best practices, like follow naming standards when you when you name your tables and uh, your columns. Um, so generally, um, reduce the redundancy with normalization. So normalization is like a concept. Maybe probably, maybe you some of you already know. This is basically. Um, um, no, um, okay, we'll we'll go over this in a bit about normalization. Create the right number of tables depending on your use case. Again, we'll also expand on this in a bit. Um, uh, documentation. So uh, documenting, um, like when you create your schema, um, you have to document like um, making basically comments or notes about every uh, part. Um, and this is like best practice in general in any part of, uh, of coding everywhere you can have to document what you do uh, to make it understandable um, protect data integrities so constraint use constraints and rules like not null so in some tables uh, let's, let's go back for example um, uh, if in the user table you want every user to have an email, so it has to be there. It cannot be empty. So uh, you can put a constraint that it has to be not null. Not null. That means when you are if someone uh, any query run afterward to update this table or modify it in any way, it cannot leave the email uh, field empty. It it will be like. Um, it's a constraint you put so to protect the integrity of your data so anything that is necessary you have to add it so these are different uh, um constraints not null um foreign keys constraints for possible values if there are values that are not allowed you have to remove them so the data type is also a constraint um, um 
and yeah, using stored procedure to access data, this is like uh, maybe something a bit more advanced, but okay. So uh, I will talk about, um, we want to discuss normalization and I just wanted to, to notice what is like, uh, so this is a type of a schema called the star schema. And um, this and the next kind of type of schema, which is called uh, like snowflake. So it, I, I'm just like, uh, these are not in, these are um, uh, ERDs, right? These are the same data in different uh, tables. So here in this uh, schema, I'm using uh, four tables to for this for storing this data. And in the next one, I'm using like how many, like, I don't know. These are 13 tables. I'm using 13 tables to store the same data in 13 tables. And the difference between these two, so this is called a star schema and this is called the snowflake schema. The difference between these two is the level of normalization. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so explaining what normalization is. Um, so, um, a database design technique that makes um, divide tables into smaller and smaller tables, connecting them through relationships, okay? The goal of normalization is to reduce redundancy. So that you are not repeating any kind of data and that also means that you are uh, reducing the storage you are using more tables but reducing the storage actually so there are what's called uh, normal forms which are measuring the level of normalization you're doing the level of redundancy you have starting from like the one form one normal form second two normal form um second normal form and so on so moving for more more and so each one has its um described this uh, like for example um so the first normal form and this is just like the basic um is um each row each record has one it has to be unique and um so this is just a basic for uh, our relational, relational databases but the actual concern is that each cell holds one value, cannot have multiple values. Um, for a second, uh, so just going back to explain what happened between, what's the difference between these two kind of um, database, uh, schemas, sorry. What's the difference between the star and the snowflake? So here is the data. I'm just going to explain the data here in a little bit. Um, I hope this is actually, you can see. So this is like a data from like um, multiple bookstores. Um, you have, uh, so you have book sales. One table is book sales has a sale ID, the book ID, the time, the store that did the sale, the sale amount and quantity. Uh, you have uh, a time, time, um, a timetable basically. So you have the time, time ID. So instead of uh, storing at a date, you are storing the date as a day, month, quarter, and year. And I think this is done just to because in some queries you might just want to um, join or aggregate data by by quarter. Uh, so this is done in a, a separate table. This this time ID is referenced here. Um, so one too many. So you have a store table as well. So because each store is referenced by an ID here. And here you have more data. You have the address, the city, the state and country. And in a cell also you have a book ID and there are more information about the book ID. The book, sorry, in a table. We have the titles also as a publisher and in general. Um, okay, so here already, of course, you can you can had you could have had just one table including all this information in the same place. So instead of having a book ID, you could have included with the cell ID. You could have included the book, the titles, also the publishers, the general here. But think about it: every time you sell the same book you will have this 
columns having the same values. So uh, for sales that have the same book ID, they will also have the same book title, the same book author, the same publisher, the same genre. So there is some redundancy in your data and the same for the others as well. Uh, so you, you can see like already this reduces the redundancy in a great way. So you have, you're extending each um, uh, one dimension. So you have one more table basically in, for, for each. Um, uh, so what more you can do? Basically what you can extend this even more thinking again just i'm going to just consider this part but the same applies to the other um, flanks uh, so for the book table which has a title the author publisher and general think that it at an author can have multiple books right so instead of repeating the information about the same author multiple times for each book you can include the author id and then have a, a separate table for an author that you have more information about the author there. The same idea about the publisher or genre, fictional books or like uh, children books. There will be multiple um, books of that. You can have it separate. So basically you are extending it even more. So that's why you are getting, as you are reducing the redundancy. Reducing redundancy is increasing the number of tables. I hope this is clear. So um, this is like a two normal form and um, this is an extra like a level of normalization basically. So, okay, so why would you do this or why you do, would you not? Like when would you use which one? Again, this is a, a, um, a matter of choice in a sense. But what matters is um, what, how you use your, your, um, your database. When it is, it is useful to have it very normalized in this way is uh, when you first you reduce the storage, as I said, because you are reducing the redundancy. The second thing is that if you are just going to be updating your, your table, it's, it, you're just like uh, using your table for like um, um, uh, for transactional uh, um, uh, uh, uses, not analysis. So transaction is just going to be um, updating it every day, let's say. Um, it's easier to have it very normalized because that means that uh, generally you're not going to be updating a lot of it. And also because every table have its uh, like um, with more tables you have more constraints and basically have more checks on the integrity. But if you are going to be doing analysis, let's say you want to just aggregate data by quarter and just like then see how many which genres are like selling more each quarter. Um, if you have your data very normalized like this, that means that you will have to join a lot of tables to get this information. Let's say I want to aggregate data per quarter and compare generals. That means I have to get the genera from this table, so I have to join this table with this one, with this one, and then also join it with, uh, with the table of quarters here. So I have to join one, two, three, four, five, six, six joints which is a lot if you do an analysis. So with analysis, you will need less normalization. With transactional, you need, uh, normalization is useful there. In analysis, it's less, it's, it's, um, it's an inconvenience. So think about how you're using your data when you design your schema. So, um, yes, so the right, uh, this is what I said before, just before, the right intensive, uh, more normalization is um, is um, useful because you get like uh, more consistently um, like uh, less writing and more um, more checks on your data. Uh, for the analysis, you you want to have quicker 
query so you don't you want you don't want as like a lot of joints so don't normalize as much so this is just general um directions so uh we're over time actually but um is there any question we can just like take maybe extra five minutes and go through like how to use it with python it's simple but any questions so far There are no questions. I, I will assume that everything is super clear. And um, so if that's not correct, yes. OK, so the question, how we structure our file for the DB connection. Um, um, and this called query to create table in the project. Should we create a new folder for that, or what do you put? Uh, is suggested. So, okay. Um, how do you create your database? That you have multiple options to do that. And just we will jump. Let me jump into the demo right away, so that like you can see. So one way, of course, you can just like once you install your Postgres. Um, um, just give me a moment. Once you install uh, Postgres in your uh, uh, on your machine, you can um, create like use um, create your database right there right away. Just uh, maybe I can show you how to connect to my um, second. So basically, you can use the SQL um, commands to create your database right there. Another thing you can do is that you can connect your database through Python and basically uh, run this uh, through, like there is SQL Alchemy. Uh, for example, this one library where you can use SQL and uh, with Python. And there you can also create your database from a Python script as well. So I'm just trying to open the terminal. And OK, so uh, let me share my screen just to okay right so yeah from okay so this is my terminal and i can just uh, so i installed in installing postgres i have this um uh, i can connect with my postgres using uh, this command psql and here I can see, so um, these are my different databases. So backslash L is, um, is, is like the command to see the different uh, databases. So I basically can use an SQL um, command here, create that the base and let's say it's um and let's say it's news analysis right that's what my database is created right so this is my news analysis uh, new database and of course it's an empty now for now so like i can connect to it with backslash connect c right was let's see and use analysis um, 
telling us and made a mistake. The news and the analysis. Okay. Um, so I can. Is it, uh, so I don't have any tables so far. I can go ahead and create tables. Again, also create table here, like create um, table and run the whole command I, I want here and create the table the way I want. So running this kind of command uh, in the terminal here, I can create the table. But I can also um, I use, um, Okay. Um, you can see that you basically can, using this library in Python, you can create a database from an SQL uh, file like this one. So it has this SQL file that has, has SQL commands. I'm just going to run it from Python, from inside Python, sorry. So, uh, connect, creating the connection parameters. So these are uh, hosts is local host because I have Postgres locally. The user is like usually it's Postgres. So this is the normal default values, but you can can change. Okay, of course the port also is the default value. I can connect to the database using this parameter. Um, so I'm connected to Postgres actually. And then I can create in this uh, here, I can create, I can run create database and basically um, um, run these commands to create the different columns, so different tables, sorry. So this is, all right. So I have this, so these are SQL commands to create different tables, right? I can run them from inside. So what I have to is just like uh, execute the file content as uh, the SQL commands from inside Python and then close the connection. So this is one way to do it. Another, so I already showed one way, this is the second way. Uh, there are different library, um, SQL Alchemy as well. And there you can also, for SQL Alchemy also allows you to create your uh, tables as modules. So I don't have actually an example of that, but you can just like uh, look up uh, how to do that as well um, in using SQL Alchemy um, um, to, to create different tables with all the, um, it will be a Python, a Python like uh, in in a, in a Python code. You don't even have to write SQL code to, to create there. What's good about SQL Alchemy is also allows you to create a table just from uh, a pandas data frame, right? So you can see here, I have imported pandas, and one of the functions I define here is, um, yeah, well, actually. You can just from whatever, like uh, this is a pandas data frame. You can use a function called to SQL. Here you define the table. And you can either create the table from, if you didn't have it, you can just create it. Or uh, you can add like if exist, for example, here you can have options like append. That means it will update the table that already exists or uh, sometimes it's to replace it if you choose a different, um, uh, uh, if you choose uh, use to do that. So, so this is a super easy way to actually create your schema or creating your tables. It's just from a data frame. You can just create it right away. So as you can see, there are multiple options to doing this. So I hope that is like answers your question. And I hope that was clear. Any uh, are so was this quite, was this clear? Okay. So any other questions? Something I missed. Uh, 
Um, so there was a question about the particular task in the challenge, right? About task three. Um, so you want you, the is ask you to create a schema using like one of these, or like you can uh, again, this is creating an ERD for your data, so something like this. You can easily do this here. Um, and include that, sorry, in your, like, uh, you can include that ERD in the report. Um, create your tables using Python, as I showed you, there are multiple ways to do that. And load the all relevant feature to the database. So basically, you already have your data as raw, raw data as CSV files. Once you do your ADA, you can store your data in the database. If you do like uh, once you do like um, the modeling and you think like some of this um, like you have data that you want to store as well, you can store more data there in your database. How you store your data? Like, uh, would you combine the tables? Would you leave the tables like into like can just like add all your tables, merge all of the thing in one table, or like divide them on multiple tables? It's completely up to you. And what you think is um, is fit for for you use? Thinking about like you want once you store the data after ADA, you're going to be using it, querying it for uh, to run your modeling. Um, that's one way to to think about how how to do this. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to emphasize that is the goal of this task is not. Uh, is to to demonstrate your SQL skills and how to use SQL with Python, um, because like uh, the data is small enough, or like um, you are only using it yourself, so uh, and using it once probably, so you might just say like, why don't I, I store everything as a CSV file or just run everything on the same notebook? It is possible to do that. But we want you to actually use your database, connect to it, use it, and store data in it. So, uh, yeah, it's like, yes, we want you to, to do that. Um, again, uh, so any other questions? I just wanted to say, like, uh, again, you can also use um, MySQL and connect for, to MySQL from Python as well. You can do that in the, um, you're just going to use a different connection um, string here, um, different connection parameters, but it will be like a similar thing. Uh, so again, there is a question about should we put the schema in the project and push it to GitHub in addition to the report? Uh, you mean the ERD, uh, the, this ERD diagram? If you're talking about this one, you can add it as a, like maybe take a screenshot and add it to your GitHub if you want. That's possible. Um, but of course, uh, the the code that where you connect your database from Python that what we what we have you should have in your GitHub. Um, how do you load all the relevant data features into the database? So there are multiple ways in doing this. Basically, because you are using from Python, you're using Python or, or you're doing like you're using pandas, I would say like the simplest way is just like use this um, functionality in, Py in pandas where you can, with SQL Alchemy, um, you have to define like uh, connect to the Postgres here in this create this create engine um, method from uh, SQL Alchemy and pass that to the so this is the data frame you have you can just pass the engine and then the particular table you want to add the data to and run this so like the whole code is just two lines basically. So this is a simple way to, to do this uh, because you're already using pandas. There are other ways to do because we can also write SQL, SQL um, commands and you can run those also from, from Python. 
not necessarily using this one. It's up to you basically which one, but this is one way to do it. Does that make sense to you? Right? So Mama is asking, like, uh, should we create one table combining the data set or should we create three different tables and relate them? Um, okay, it's a choice. It's your choice. Uh, <laughs> think what is what is more suitable for you. Like, uh, if you can argue for it. So I would say make a choice and in your report argue for why you made this choice. Like, yes, I created my schema this way because it's easier for like uh, for my analysis later on or like uh, because I just wanted to to reduce like redundancy. So I stored it in three different tables. It's up to you. Like, just keep in mind that you have to argue for the choice. So there are not exactly, uh, I would say, there are not exactly one correct way to do it. Uh, so, so, okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, so uh, because, like, um, yes, almost uh, one hour, 20 minutes, uh, we can stop the tutorial here, the so recording here. So we did the both uh, tutorial.